Welcome to another lesson brought to you by Elite Educational and Professional Academy. In today's lesson, we're going to explore waves. We're going to learn about waves. What are the wave properties? This video is a part of a sequential series in which we're going to initiate it by talking about waves, introducing waves and the wave properties, followed by learning about the wave frequencies, the wave speed, and how can we calculate all of them. So make sure at this point that you click subscribe and you stay tuned for all of these updates in which it will help you understand this entire lesson completely. If you are a physics student or an engineering student, this is a must know concept as part of your educational development. So let's go ahead and start the lesson. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to place the properties on a wave. So in order to explain the properties of a wave, the best way to go about it is by visual representation. So in front of us right here, let's have an axis. Now on the horizontal axis, we're going to call it distance which means how far your wave is traveling in the direction of travel. And on the Y axis, we're going to call it displacement. Now, often students get confused between displacement and distance. Think about it this way. You're, you're on a jet ski and you are riding a wave. Now, how high is the wave is your displacement? How far are you going with your jet ski forward? This is your distance. That will help you eliminate the confusion. Now, uh, let's use a different color to sketch the wave and let's have a transverse wave starting here from the origin, cycling up, then down, then up again. Now, the flat line right here, this is called the resting position where you don't have any motion whatsoever. The maximum part is called the crest which is the higher peak, the highest peak of a wave. And the low part is called a trough, which is the lowest part of the wave. So we have a crust, we have a trough. Now between the flat line, which is the resting position, and the crest, we have a displacement covered, which is the maximum distance, vertical distance. In this case, displacement. This is referred to as the amplitude. This is referred to as the amplitude. The amplitude refers to how high your wave is, the maximum displacement covered by your wave. So we have a crest, we have a trough, we have the amplitude. So far, are the, these are the main properties of a wave. <clears throat> We're going to add one more important property which is the period of a wave so when we refer to a period it's given by the capital letter t period capital letter t which is also in seconds it means the time taken to complete one wave or oscillation. Because we're talking about repeated motion, periodic motion, or harmonic motion, these are terms that go hand in hand together. So the time that the time taken to repeat one wave or one oscillation in seconds is basically the period. So the unit of measurement for period of measurement is seconds. So how does that look like on the sketch that we have? So let's say I'm starting my wave right here. And let's trace the wave such that we're looking for one complete wave, right? We're going up. We're going down. 
and we have completed a single wave. So how can we confirm that we have completed a single wave? Take this piece of advice and you can apply it to eliminate the confusion in terms of the process. One complete top plus one complete bottom, that's one complete wave, okay? That's one complete wave. So one complete top, one complete bottom, that's a complete wave. So if you're going to take a look at this part right here, okay, let me make it more refined. So let's say this part right here. Now this is a quarter. It's not a complete top. This is basically a quarter of a wave. If I need to complete it, it means I have to go all the way back down, right? So this is a quarter of a wave. So I have one complete wave. And in this case, it's 0 0.25 waves. So if you were asked, how many waves do you have in front of you right now? You have 1.25 waves. Now, this is a visual representation that will help you eliminate the confusion in terms of figuring out the number of waves. Just look at it. If you have one complete top, one complete bottom, that's a complete wave. The other pieces, they are fragments. They are segments. You can just simply add to your number of waves. And another important attribute that we should be having right now is the wavelength. This is a very important property of a wave that is often needed in order to help you calculate the wave speed at a later point as I'm going to show you in the upcoming video how can we calculate the frequency and calculate the wave speed so what is the wavelength if you're going to be taking any point on the wave that point should be replicated on the other wave and typically we go for the easiest ones crest to crest or trough to another trough but in this case we don't have a trough in front of me the most convenient one is basically the crest to crest so if i go from crest to crest and here we go which is right here roughly sketched this distance this distance from here to here this is my wavelength dominated by the letter greek letter lambda which is also measured in meters and another real life application of this imagine you are riding a wave using your jet ski and you're on the crest and in front of you you see the crest of another wave the distance between you from your crest to the following crest this is your wavelength this is your wavelength keep in mind the wavelength could be taken from any point and another way for you to find the wavelength, as we're going to be learning through sketching the or graphing the waves, is just simply starting from the initial position. So if I start from here, where is the consecutive point that is going to be repeated? Let's go ahead and trace the wave to see where that point is. You're going to go up, down, then up again, right? This is the same point repeated on a new wave. So from here, to here if we sketch it right here from here all the way to here it's the same wavelength the same lambda just two different points so let's recap the properties that we have covered so far i have a crest which is the maximum the upper boundary of a wave which is the upper point of a wave let's say i have the trough which is the lowest point of a wave i have the amplitude which is the maximum height covered by my wave maximum displacement i have the resting position in which i don't have any movement whatsoever this completely flat line and i've had i have a wavelength which is the distance between two consecutive points same points on one wave and the corresponding point on the other wave. And finally, we have the period, which is the time taken to complete one wave or oscillation, which is represented in seconds. Now, these are the properties of the waves that we have to keep in mind. In the following videos, you will learn how to calculate the wave speed.
how to calculate the wave frequency, and how to graph a wave. So the first building block that we need to have is to understand and know what are the wave's properties that we are dealing with. So we've talked about crests, troughs, amplitudes, wavelengths. These are the essential properties that every single wave should possess. Whether we're talking about a transverse wave, which is one form of a mechanical wave, or a longitudinal wave, which is the, another form of a mechanical wave. In case you do not know the difference between both, a transverse wave is a wave that oscillates back and forth, up and down, perpendicular to its direction of travel. However, a longitudinal wave oscillates back and forth parallel to the direction of travel. It doesn't go up and down. An example of transverse wave would be the waves of the ocean. An example of a longitudinal wave would be the sound waves, which is something that we encounter on a daily basis. So at this current point, you should know what are the wave properties, what is a wave, what does it do, and in the following videos, we're going to learn about how to calculate the frequency of a wave, what is the frequency of a wave, and we're going to learn about the wave speed and how can we calculate the wave speed as well. At this current point, make sure that you click that subscribe button and you turn on that bell notification to stay tuned for these updates.